asking that I come with your grace to wash us into the era of freedom. That we shall be liberated beyond the imagination of our enemies. That our traitors will see us walk into glory. We see us freed from the shackles of sickness and disease. We see us triumphant. We see us moving in the strength of the Lord and as delivered by you. For we glorify your name to the honor and glory of your name to Christ our Lord. I just like you to lift up your hand and bless the name of the Lord. Blessing especially for your life, for the privilege of this day, for the privilege of this moment, for the privilege of this month. This is the month of months and the week of weeks. Then I will bring the into 
a factory to learn. There will be so many that they will be competing over the ground. They will eat everything that the hail did not destroy. Even the trees that are left. They will fill your palaces and the houses of all your officials and all, and all your people. They will be worse than anything your ancestors ever saw. Then Moses returned and returned and left. The king's officials said to him, How long is this man going to give us trouble? Let the Israelite men go, so that they can worship the Lord their Lord. Don't you realize that Egypt is ruined? So Moses and Aaron, they are brought back to the king, and he said to them, You may go and worship the Lord your Lord, but exactly who will go? Moses answered, We will all go including our children and our old people. We will take our sons and daughters, our sheep and goats, and our cattle, because we must hold a festival to honor the Lord. The king said, I swear by the Lord that I will never let you take your women and children. It is clear that you are brought into the roads. No, only men may go and worship the Lord. If that is what you want, with that, Moses and Aaron were driving out of the king's presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, Place your hand over the land of Egypt to bring the locusts. Then they go and eat everything that grows, everything that has survived the hail. So Moses raised his stick, and the Lord caused the wind from the east to blow on the land all that day and all that night. By morning it had brought the locusts. They came in swamps and settled over the whole country. It was the largest swarm of locusts that had ever been seen or that ever would be seen again. They covered the ground until it was dark with them. They ate everything that the hen has had ate, including all the fruit on the trees. Not everything was left on any tree or plant in the land of Egypt. Then the king hurriedly called Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin this once and pray to the Lord your God. Take the witness for her punishment from me. Moses left the king and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord changed the east wind into a very strong west wind, which picked up the locusts and threw them into the gulf of Zones. Not one locust was left in all Egypt. But the Lord made the king stubborn, and he did not let the Israelites go. Amen. 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 I want you to be happy this evening. From that verse, precisely from verses 9 and 10, I like us to base our reflection there, and that is nobody will be left behind. Nobody will be left behind. Amen. Amen. Do you want to be left behind? Aisha? Yes. Do you want to go? Yes. Do you want to go? Yes. yes, I will go. I don't know about you. Will you go? Yes. Huh? Yes. Nobody will hold you back. When God says, go. When God says, you are free. Nobody can keep you back. Amen. He said to him, leave this man to another, I will show you. And then, Abraham obeyed God, but before that, God added to that instruction. He said, I 
site that is to be bush. That the bush was burning, it's just like imagining that we were coming into this church and probably from the very road we heard that imagine that church was burning and we are seeing the smoke rising, rising, and everybody was shouting and screaming. And you ran, get into this church, you see that the church is in fire on fire, but the church is this time. Is that not a surprise? You will go to the house. And so, when that happened, Moses' curiosity was attracted. And so he began to walk very close to the burning bush. Amen. 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 See, this thing we are talking is not a story. It's not a story, it's a reality. When you go to Jerusalem and then you enter Egypt, on your way to Mount Sinai, the burning bush is on the right hand side. There is a monastery there where the burning bush was. It's something that happened. You go there, you will see it. The burning bush just at the foot of the mountain of Mount Sinai. So Moses' attention was drawn and he came there. When he came, as he was approaching, God called him and said, Moses, 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 stop. Do not come here. And when he inquired for that, he said, Who are you? He said, I'm God. He said, Off your shoes, for the ground upon which you stand is what? Holy. Amen. Amen. And then he off his shoes. Sorry, I'd like you to read that passage, the, 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 the other part of it. Then God gave him a specific instruction. He gave him a specific instruction. He said, I have heard a cry of my people, Israel. God said, do not go any closer. Take off your sandals because they Just go down. Just go down. I want to hear God say, I have heard a cry of my people. Then the Lord said, I have seen how cruel my people are being treated in Egypt. Amen. Amen. You see, the psalmist gives us the description of God. He said, We serve a living God. We serve a God who has ears that can do what? Can I hear you? Yeah. That can do what? Yeah. Then we serve a God that has eyes that can do what? See. We serve a God that has legs that can do what? What? So our God is always aware of our problems. Even when you are crying night and day, You are praying to God about a particular thing and the Lord said God is not hearing or not aware. He's aware. Here he told, he told him, I have heard the cry of the children of Israel in Egypt. It has reached my words. Yes. I want to assure you that your cry has reached God's ears. And that is why this year or this month you will not be left behind. You will not remain in Egypt. You will join the crusade of those who will cross over. Why the declaration is made that you go, you will do what? Go. It does not matter who says that you will not go. You will go when your God has said, this is the day, this is the time, this is the hour that you have got to go. Nobody will stop you. That's what he said to me. He said to him, I have heard them cry out to be rescued from their slave drivers. I know all about their sufferings. And so I have come out to rescue them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of Egypt to a spacious land, one which is rich on water, and in which the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hibiscites, and the Jebusites now live. I have indeed heard the cry of my people, and I see how the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now, I am sending you to the king of Egypt, so that you can lead my people out of this country. Okay, praise the Lord. The sending of Moses on the visitation of what's that baby? Was to think about salvation of the people, to lead them away from 
slavery to war, freedom. Who is the one leading? Who is the one leading? God is leading. And when God is leading, the mountains will go down before you. The hills will crumble before you. Armies will bow down before you. And I pray for you that this month, before this month, the Lord starts to the general in this year, many of the mountains still standing on their way will go down. Do 
not depart from the path of sin. When God refused to listen to all that, eventually the end result of it was that Pharaoh was destroyed together with the host of the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. Now, in the dialogue between Moses and Pharaoh, when he got because at this point, that was about the ninth plague that God was bringing upon the Egyptians because of holding back with Israelites. When he discovered that Moses will not remain, that Moses will not stop coming, he and his advisors, his advisors said to him, How long will this man disturb us in the land of God, Egypt? Let this people go. And then he put a question. He said, By the way, if I have to let you people go, who are those going? Amen. And now he's coming to his senses. Who are those ones? And he said, All of us. The men, young and old, the women, all the animals, they were not leaving anything behind. It was because of the You shall make trouble with the encounters today in the name of Jesus. They will see that there is something inside of you that is special that is making you to make trouble. And they will let you do what? Go. Amen. Amen. And then when he said that, he said, if you will have to go, only the men will go with you. Amen. Sometimes there is no negotiation with the devil. There is no negotiation with what? Tell your neighbor, there is no negotiation with the devil. At some point in your life, you do not need to negotiate with your enemy. And what did Moses do or say at that point? Moses told him, Pharaoh, here and now, there is no compromise. If you have to go, Everybody will go and do what? Go. Nobody will be left behind. The children will not be left behind. The women will not be left behind. The animals will not be left for behind. Everybody will do what? Go. At that point, he became angry. And he said, In that case, get out of my sight. Amen. Amen. Let somebody be provoked by your goodness to him or her. When you tell him, get out. There is this American movie. The, the title of that movie is the um, F1. that 
criminal. And then the man had already been released, dressed up, and he was walking out of the prison in America. When the second email came, order was given, and the man was shut, shut down. The plane that came to take him, they were already there, but the soldiers from America shot the man, the prisoner, and he died on the spot. And then the president back in the plane, in the air, began to fight with the terrorists who had hijacked the plane. He fought them one after the other. Some of his men got themselves released. They killed them one after the other. And then America sent another Air Force One to rescue the president from this plane because that one was losing fuel. And then some part of it had been damaged. They had to secure their president with fighter jets and this other one. So at the point of exchange, the president said every other officer will have to leave the plane. They kept leaving one after the other, joined the plane that had come to. So at the last point, it was remaining the president and one other man he thought was his man. Only for him to discover at that point that the man was against him. And then the man wanted to shoot the president. But then the president managed to overpower him. And then pushed him out, put, um, what is it, parachute around his neck. And while he was pushing him out of the plane, he pushed him out of the plane and released the parachute and he got hung and died. And while the president pushed him out, when he pushed him out, he said, get out of my plane. Praise the Lord. That is where you're going to tell your enemy tonight, get out of my life. You will get out of my life. Because God has said, nobody will be left towards behind. And when the, plane, the president said that, he eventually was being rescued and he struggled over to the other plane. And this other one that was hijacked eventually crashed into the sea. But the president was saved and most of his officials were saved. And nobody was left towards behind. And so, Moses said to Pharaoh, Nobody will be left behind. We are all going together. Citizens of heaven, children of the house of the Lord, we are going to the Father through the Son in the Spirit. He said that because we are all citizens of what? Heaven. They were marching to their land of freedom. God had made a declaration from the world go that Israel will be liberated. And Pharaoh was giving them condition that some persons will have to be kept behind. And he said, no, nobody will be left out behind. And when he said that, the man became angry with him and said, get out of my sight. soon you will see the action of God and as he left his presence God said command the locusts to come and he did and the whole place was covered with locusts. Child of God you have a power in your hand and that is your faith to make declaration against that circumstance that says you will not survive. That situation that says you cannot prove true. No. There will be no negotiation at that point. When we look at the life of Paul or Saul in Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, prior to his conversion, Paul was a threat to Christians. Paul supervised the killing of Stephen. Paul ensured that people were being subjected to all manner of persecution. And the final point of it was, because he was bloated by his knowledge, he was bloated by his knowledge of the law. He was bloated by the fact that he was a, city, a Roman citizen and so he had immunity from any kind of attack from anybody. Even when you take it to God, he will tell you, I am a Roman world citizen. And what people will hear, be afraid to hear is to say, he is a Roman citizen or she is a Roman citizen. They are untouchable. And so he used that 
to suppress people and oppress people. But at the final point, what happened? He was bloated in his sin, pride and arrogance of his knowledge. But when the time came, what happened? The Lord subdued him. Pharaoh was flexing power with God. When God says, let my people go, he said, no, I will not let them go. There are many of us here, someone is speaking a negative language over your heads. Okay now, let me come and see you marry. Over my dead body, will you do what? Marry. You will tell that person, the person will be buried and you will marry. Somebody is saying, this is Christmas, we are waiting for him or her at do. Let him come. When he comes, it's his dead body that will go back. You will go and you will come back in the name of Jesus. Somebody is saying, you cannot progress in life. Will you allow the statement of the enemy to prevail over you? Some of you, some of us, sometimes ah, they are after me, they are after me. Have you forgotten what you have in your hand? God said to Moses, Moses, why do you cry to me? What do you have in your hand? And he said, the staff. He said, use it. Have you used the staff God has given to you? Your staff of authority, which is your thought and your faith in God. Have you used it to counteract the statement someone has made over your head? Pharaoh said, only the men will go. And what he said, everybody will do what? Will go. Everybody in your family will survive this year. You will not lose someone. No, you will not. You will survive that onslaught from the enemy. The one that someone is saying that only a few of you will survive this year, the tsunami of death will try in your lineage in the name of Jesus. That is what Moses said. And when he left, God said, stretch out your rod. And he stretched it out. And the locusts came and cleared everything that was on the land. Amen. Amen. I think sometime last week we had our five days healing school, going to the healing school. And you think those things we are for nothing. They are not for nothing. We think God is fighting your battle. God will fight your battle for you. Even when they say that no, that will be the end of you this time. So praise the Lord. I want to share a gossip with you this evening. You want to hear my gossip? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. It's a very expensive gossip. <laughs> you love the gossip. Yeah. I was discussing something with my bishop today and he said, and somebody told him that, how are you surviving? He said, it's the prayer of the people for me. You know, at every mass we pray for the bishop. You know that? Is celebrated, every priest mentions the name of the bishop. And that prayer, you think it does not work? It works. He says, I survive on the prayer of my priest. Yet every mass, morning, afternoon, and what? Night. We present him to, to God, and God keeps keeping him. And so he told the person, I survive on that. Child of God, you survive on the prayers you've been making over your head. Granted that this year we have buried some people in this parish, but you discover that the majority of those we have buried are people that are old. Two of us. You think our 21 days program has not been working? You think our Friday adoration has not been working? The times we spend in the presence of God, He remembers. He remembers those times. And so my dear friends, this year, 2020, the year of trouble, the year of confusion, the year of sickness, the year of pandemic, we are alive by the grace of God. And because he has kept us alive, nobody will be left behind. We are crossing over to 2021. If you believe in Shabbat Ayyada, Amen. If you believe in Shabbat Ayyada, Amen. If you believe in Shabbat
lift up and claim it in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, tell someone you are crossing over. You are not staying behind. This year will usher you into the area of your triumph and glory. In the name of Jesus.
for you. And you walk out in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter who has locked you there for the whole year. I open it in the name of Jesus. The prison gate of sickness I unlock for you. That you walk out into health in the name of Jesus.